Let's talk with Mike Sorensen, CEO and owner of Wild Energy, which provides energy monitoring, energy monitoring and control solutions for RV parks and campgrounds. I'm Alex Burkett, and this is the Outdoor Alliance's podcast. Mike, thanks for being here. Hey, good to be here, Alex. Hey, so I know we both just left from uh, the Carolina show down in Myrtle Beach. So I wanted to start and ask you, you know, how was that show like? And, um, you know, how are you doing since I just saw you? That show always amazes me. You know, you think of it, it, many of the state shows are smaller, but the Carolinas is a decent show, lots of attendance, good sessions. Um, You know, I'm always impressed with how well they put it on. So, you know, it's one of those shows that surprises me every year. Yeah, I felt the same way too. The energy was great. It was my first time attending that one as well. And you could just tell that, you know, people down there um, love camping and there are a lot of great large parks there and you can just see the the energy and and feel that at that conference. So Mike, it it might just be helpful for everybody who may not know um, enough about you or the product. Just give us a quick background on you personally and how you came to to found uh, Wild Energy and where you guys are at today. Sure, sure. So my background is is technology. You know, I've been chief technology officer at many places, um, worked at large ones like J.P. Morgan Chase, and I just love using technology for business. And um, and the idea came uh, to me as as a camper. So I was kind of on the other side of the industry as a consumer. Um, we would go camping in our big RV and plug it into pedestals. And it was on a day when we went camping with some some neighbors and friends, and we we both went to the same campground. I plugged in my big RV. They set up their tent in a site next to us, and and my buddy walked over to his pedestal and plugged in his phone to charge his phone. And I said, hold on a second. We both paid the same to camp here, and I'm getting all this free energy, you know, my air conditioners, my refrigerators. Um, And as you can imagine, you know, I had kids. We'd leave the door open. It It didn't matter. You know, we were getting a free uh, commodity, so to speak. And, you know, we didn't have to manage it. Didn't matter if we were using a lot or a little bit. And I said, this doesn't make any business sense. And, uh, being a technology guy, I'm like, I can help, you know, monitor, measure, you know, charge this back, um, for the, for the owner. And Hey, that's going to make a lot of sense. And they'll get that right away. It's a, it's a good business decision. So that that's where it started. It literally started in a garage, which is kind of fun. Now we're in a big warehouse with pallets and <laughs> 18 wheelers that show up with stuff and take stuff away. And so it's really grown out of the garage for sure. And we're all over the all over the United States now um, waiting for our approval to move into Canada. And uh, we've even been asked for some international locations. And I know, you, as you just mentioned, Mike, the technology focus is a big part of the company and what you guys do. Talk a little bit about maybe just the product as a whole and what you're trying to do, especially with a product that will hopefully be able to pay itself off very quickly and provide that good return for park owners so that, yes, it is an investment in in the product itself. But, I mean, you're just going to make that investment back like that and set yourself up for better success with energy usage and monitoring down the road. Yeah, it's a, there's a lot of good good nuggets in what you just said. Um, you know, we started off just measuring kilowatts and hey, we were relaying kilowatts and usage and all that. And the product has really evolved quite a bit because there's so much more information we can get out of the metering technology that's that's in those pedestals. You know, we can watch voltage. We know if the pedestal's there, if it's gone offline, you know, if somebody's run it over. We know if somebody's tried to mess with the meter and pull it out. We know if energy is being used when there's nobody checked into that spot. Um, we know when there's significant energy spikes, somebody plugs in an EV or, you know, they're, they're really pulling a lot of um, consumption off that pedestal. So, you know, we've evolved from just measuring kilowatts to using all that data and all that insight um, to help the owners operate their campgrounds better, provide better customer service, because if there's an outage or an issue, they want to address that quickly. Um, we're moving into a place where we're going to be watching the, you know, all of their infrastructure as power consumption goes way up because you're going to start blowing circuit breakers and transformers and, um, and that's not going to be good for anybody. So, you know, we're going to be using that data again for, for better customer service on the return on investment side. It's pretty amazing. So if you have a campground that has no meters and you add meters, the return on that investment is four to five months. It's ridiculously short, you know, and in, in industry that I worked in, we were looking for return on investment five years or less, you know, that was kind of the threshold. Um, so some of these returns are, are super, super short. 
as the industry moves to charging for utilities on a short term basis, you know, sub a week, I would say, you know, a lot of campgrounds are charged for utilities when you're a week and, and longer. But we're now getting to the point where people want to and are charging for utilities for overnight or weekend stays. And that's because the, the consumers bring so much more equipment that needs electricity. Um, that, you know, they've got a Prevost that's using three air conditioners and, and household appliances. And those things will pull as much as an, as an EV. So, you know, they're using 40 bucks of energy a day. Easy. Then you have EVs rolling in. People come in and they want to charge their cars and they plug them into the pedestal. And, you know, even if you have rules that say don't do that, we still see them. <laughs> our stuff, our software sees that EV immediately and plugged in. You know, we can detect that. So there's a whole lot of return on the investment. We can dig into each one of those. But there's, you know, we've evolved significantly and, there, and there's a lot that's changed in our industry. And I know one of the features of your product that I liked was the ability for owners to to see that self-management themselves. And it's not like this is a thing where, um, you know, they're totally hands off from the process or di disconnected from what's going on, that it's really a, a cloud-based solution, right? If I, you know, remember that correctly. And it's something that um, has that technology focused as an, even a newer generation of owners comes into the marketplace. And there's there's that shift in the industry, as you talked about, that your technology is built to sort of shift with that and sort of move into this next wave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, we're picking up all this data real time. Um, it was a little bit scary at first because I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? And and we're getting so much data into the cloud. Um, but we've learned to tame that beast and actually use that data. And um, uh, it is kind of amazing. We are doing, you know, we're moving into other commodities or other utilities, I should say, like water. I was just going to mention that as well. Yeah. You had mentioned that at the conference and that was an exciting development. Right. And so we're working on the software to be kind of intelligent on that side as well. Can we can we find leaks? Can we find when somebody left the hose on? Can we find, you know, we had we had one owner tell us that uh, one of their guests had a leaky toilet and burned through, you know, thousand gallons or more um, because the toilet just kept running. You know, they were gone for the week. They left their rig there. They were gone for the week. And it just, you know, burns through water, um, which is which isn't good for anybody. It's not good for the owner. It's not good for the environment. Um, you know, it. it fills up leach fields if you're if you're a campground that has your own well and leach field system so that's no good so we want you know we want our water technology now to be smart and find those things and and hopefully head off some of that and then i'll just quickly touch on the conservation aspect so when when we put electric meters in or when you shift that to the consumer side they use about it's it's amazing it's literally like 30 percent 30 33 percent less energy when they are responsible for the energy consumption so imagine campgrounds that don't charge for energy they're using 30 percent more which is not only bad for their infrastructure right they're going to run hotter heavier need you know they're going to higher loads uh, which they have to manage because they've you know they've let the consumer kind of use as much as they want but it's also not good from an, an environmental conservation perspective. We're using 30% more electricity and, and utilities. So, um, so I, we're, you know, we didn't initially start out to be a green company, but metering and, and shifting that to the consumer actually makes sense from an environmental perspective as well. Well, it's that consumer behavior change when it comes out of their pocket instead of uh, it being free. It makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, yeah, it really is. Go ahead, I was man. gonna I was gonna have one funny thing that I always tell people. You know, you don't you don't let a camper go into your campground store and pick out a candy bar and a soda and, and walk out, or even grab a bag of ice and walk out, right? Can't, owners are really like, no, you're gonna pay the buck fifty for that bag of ice for that candy bar, 75 cents for that candy bar. But it's funny, they'll give away 30, 40, 50 bucks worth of energy and not think twice about it. Um, so it's kind of a funny dynamic that yeah we're gonna we're gonna charge you a, a dollar for that candy bar but yeah we're gonna give you 30 bucks worth of electricity yeah I, and it's it's that mindset shift for sure yeah and i know um let's switch gears a little bit here and talk maybe about some of the integrations and partnerships that that you guys have so i'll start with one that came out yesterday um for, with woodall's campground magazine who announced that your integration um a new uh, app development with at my community so can you talk a little bit about you know what that what that's going to look like for you in the future and, and what that product is designed to do yeah um again we love technology so that, that made complete sense for us we we want to make the use of utilities transparent 
we don't want people to be skeptical of the metering or you're trying to nickel and dime me. You know, it is, it's really transparency. Um, so we had built a web portal where the consumer could look at their own energy consumption. But we were also being asked, uh, hey, is there a mobile app? Is there a mobile app? And it didn't make sense for us to build a mobile app and try to sell a mobile app to these campgrounds that is just utilities because that's what we do. So we looked around for, you know, what makes sense from a consumer perspective? Do they already have a mobile app when they're at these campgrounds? And at my community, you know, they have a tremendous app that provides a ton of value to the consumer that that's that's at the at the properties. And uh, and, you know, I was talking to Joe at one of the conferences and he's like, oh, we could do that. And he literally built it in, you know, like six days. He's like, yeah, show me how to pull your data in. Oh, I can I can scan the meter and the barcode off that meter. They can just, uh, you know, click here and we'll pull up their data. And uh, and then he's got some integrations with his partners where if he already knows what site they're on, they just press the button and it pops right up. So, you know. I'm, I was amazed how they, they were able to innovate so quickly and pull our data in and then, you know, make that just another, you know, consumer facing uh, service that they provide to their, their owners. So that made super sense for us to just, Hey, let's integrate with that. My community, we're not going to build our own mobile app. And then the speed at which they, uh, they did the integration was just amazing. Right. So it, so just to clarify, it sounds like anybody who's a wild energy partner and who maybe has an app, a community app, will be able to have all of that live together in that app in the app store, that's, right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah. Perfect. And I and as you mentioned, they work with a ton of parks that are out there already. So there's a lot of customers that are going to be able to take advantage of that. I know one of the other um, partnerships and integrations that you have is with two reservation providers, New Book and Stay List. Can you talk a little bit about you know how that works if a park out there maybe has them as a, their reservation provider already, but doesn't work with you on the energy side and maybe can take advantage of this if this is a direction that they want to move into 2023? Yeah, th those two partners you mentioned uh, were, were our early adopters. So they, you know, same sort of thing. They want to provide value back to their customers. They said, hey, this makes super sense to them and us. Um, so they, you know, they were able to, uh, integrate with our API, they can pull our data from the meter. So on a, on a check-in, when somebody checks into a, a campground or a spot, they pull that meter right from us in real time. They know what the meter said when they checked in, they, you know, we're measuring, you know, the usage throughout the, the duration of the stay. Um, if they happen to be a long-term guest, when they run the monthly billings, they just call the wild energy API and zoom, they got a hundred plus meters all you know, pulled into their system for billing and out go the bills. And then on checkout, they do the same thing. They say, hey, the guest checked out at 1212. What were the final readings for the site? And they pull that right in, calculate the difference and, you know, out goes the bill. So su super simple for the operators, you know, um, and that's what allows short term billing of guests. So if you have somebody that's there a weekend you're not going to send the maintenance guy out to read the meter, you know, oh, they checked in at three o'clock in the afternoon. What was it? Oh, they checked out at, you know, 945. What was it? Nobody's running out to read the meter um, to do that type of billing. <clears throat> and so that automated integration facilitates uh, facilitates the industry to start doing the short-term billing. It just was not possible with labor. Um, you need the technology to do something like that. Right. And, and that makes a ton of sense uh, from my perspective as well. I wanted to get your thoughts, Mike, as, you know, where's your focus as we enter 2023? What are you seeing as far as trends in the RV industry, whether it's on the EV side or just, you know, how, how your interactions are going with customers day to day? I mean, you know, where, where's your head at as we, we enter this next year? Yeah, I would say our focus is always on our existing customers first. We take care of them first um, before we're looking for new business um, and, and helping them along. We've added a whole bunch of features to the product, self-service reporting, self-service, you know, everything. Uh, we'll, we'll be adding a lot more automated alerts. We're talking to some of the PMS companies. Um, we want to send some of these customer service alerts right back into the property management systems, you know, where the ma property manager, where the maintenance guys can see them and act on them right away. Uh, get the information to the right to the right folks. Water is new for us this year, so we'll be doing a lot of water installations and testing of that. Uh, marinas, we're moving into the marine space. Uh, the marine pedestals are slightly different. They are kilowatt counters, and we have a different product that goes in a marine pedestal. So we're working with marine owners. Um, we have a good partner, uh, Amir, who runs Tory Trails. 
he's got another park that is both a campground and a marina. So he was one of our early adopters. And I was going to say, that's a great test park to use. And yeah, Amir's, uh, you know, a great, great voice for the industry. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's, he's lets us bring our new stuff out there, test it. He, you know, he understands that it's not always going to be perfect the first time out of the gate, but you know, we take care of our early adopters and, and because we find value in that, you know, partnerships are important. Yeah, absolutely. And Mike uh, mentioned maybe what other shows are you going to be attending this year? And then where can people um, reach out if, you know, they can't attend a show, how can people get in contact with you to learn more about the product? Yeah, I, I we've gotten so busy. And it's funny you ask for the shows. I am no longer keeping track. I have a, a new director of marketing. She's great. <laughs> She's offloaded that from me. Um, uh, we're definitely going to be at Texas. You know, Texas was virtual when we came into the industry. We're looking forward to an in-person show in Texas. Um, I'll be at the Arvik National School talking to new owners, new operators about this technology and what they can do for their parks. Um, there's another one, the Florida, Alabama one's coming up pretty soon. I think in May we'll be at that one. And beyond that, I have no idea uh, <laughs> about getting the list out, but, uh, we try to get to all the, the, the major shows. I completely get it. I'm, I'm the same way. If somebody asked me the question in reverse, I don't know that I could tell you either. So it's yeah. sort of like, take, take it one, one week, one month at a time. And, uh, right. you know, I'll sort of, I look at what shows coming up the week ahead and, and plan for that. Yeah. And it's like, dude, did I book a rental car? I don't even remember. <laughs> exactly. And Mike, where, where can people, how can people get in contact with either you or somebody on, on the sales team to learn more about the product? Yeah. Um, the best way is through our website. Um, you know, you can chat and you're usually going to get me or uh, one of our other folks, uh, Emily and marketing is helping with handle the chats because the, the volume of the chats has gone up. Um, call direct. You know, every owner operator has my cell phone directly. Um, I'm at the point now where my voicemail is filling up a little faster than I would like it to. So trying to solve that problem as quick as I can. But uh, yeah, website, phone numbers, lots of different ways to get a hold of us for sure. All right, Mike. Thanks again for being here. Yeah, Alex. Good to talk to you today. Thanks for listening to the Outdoor Alliances podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Mike. Subscribe for more episodes every Monday and Friday, and I'll see you back here for another great week of marketing content. Thanks again.